Good evening. In Hong Kong, hundreds of activists remain under siege inside the Polytechnic University, where there's been more violence today as police try to keep the campaigners trapped inside. Outside the university, protesters have tried to break the police lines, some of them using petrol bombs, while police have responded with rubber bullets and tear gas. All of this, uh, the latest development in the protests that started back in June, following plans to allow some criminal suspects to be extradited to mainland China. Critics fear that that could undermine Hong Kong's judicial independence. Those plans were withdrawn in September after intense pressure, but demonstrations have continued as protesters now demand protection for their democratic rights and an inquiry into the conduct of the police throughout this process. Our correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes is in Hong Kong with the latest for us. Well, Hugh, as you said there, this has been going on since June, nearly six months of protest. You may well ask, isn't this just another day of protest in Hong Kong? I think the answer is no. The last 48 hours here have been pretty extraordinary, even by Hong Kong standards. First of all, we've seen the police attempt to storm one of the city's major universities and failing to do so. And then today we've seen very large protests in support of those under siege in the university. And we've seen them pretty much paralyse the whole of Kowloon and turn Hong Kong's major tourist centre into something resembling a battlefield. For a few minutes today, it looked like the siege of Hong Kong Polytechnic University might end peacefully. The young protesters began streaming down the stairway that on Sunday was set aflame to block the police storming the campus. But seconds later, riot police began firing tear gas grenades, sending the young protesters scattering in confusion. Some did not escape. The clear message from the police today, if you surrender, you will be arrested. Hundreds of protesters are still holed up inside the university, and some of them still preparing for a fight. This young man's brother is one of them. Uh, he is 22 years old. He graduated last year in Poly University. He was uh, go to the uh, school after work, and we, we reached him by WhatsApp. As we know, he is safe now, but he cannot come out because police force is around the school. He trying to, he tried to come out last night, but not successful. This evening, a small group made another break for it abseiling down ropes from one of the university footbridges to a roadway below and being taken away on waiting motorcycles. As night fell in Kowloon, thousands of other protesters began coming onto the streets in support of those still besieged inside the university. Soon the streets of Kowloon were once again ablaze. Down the street behind me here, about half a mile away, is the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, which is still under siege. Around it, in many, many places tonight, are scenes like this of complete chaos, of running street battles between protesters and riot police. This, where we're standing here, is right next to many five-star hotels. This is the heart of Hong Kong's tourist and shopping district. Trapped in their rooms, tourists gaze down at the scenes below. Late tonight, a handful of underage protesters were allowed to leave the university campus. But for everyone else, the police here are now taking an increasingly hard line. The question now, Hugh, is what happens next? Uh, there are many voices here loudly calling for Carrie Lam, the Hong Kong chief executive, to come out and show leadership, to diffuse the anger and to accept some of the protesters' demands. But I have to say tonight there is no sign of Carrie Lam and the, her government appears to have decided on this course of using ever harsher police tactics to crush what now appears like a full-scale revolt. Hugh. Rupert, many thanks again. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, our correspondent there uh, in Hong Kong with the latest. Well, those events in Hong Kong clearly uh, being watched very closely in Beijing. Hong Kong was handed over to China back in 1997 after more than 150 years of British control. 
And under the so-called one country, two systems arrangement, Hong Kong was given a high degree of autonomy for a period of 50 years and Hong Kong's special status will therefore come to an end in 2047. Let's talk to our correspondent John Sudworth in Beijing. Um, and John, as the authorities in Beijing look at what's going on in Hong Kong, what are the options open to them here? Well, so far, Hugh, it seems there are very few good ones. A major military intervention for now still seems unlikely. It's risky. China would have a lot to lose, both politically and economically. And it's worth pointing out the authorities here know that while the violence in Hong Kong is intensifying, as we heard from Rupert there, it remains pretty much localised. Large parts of the city operate a, a, as normal. They are unaffected, at least directly and so Beijing's best bet it appears is simply to hope that the Hong Kong police can continue to contain things but the longer this goes on of course the more it challenges General Secretary Xi Jinping's grand vision of a unified prosperous rising China the Chinese ambassador to the Chinese ambassador to London held another press conference today accusing the UK of taking sides and quoting extensively from a speech by Mr Xi using some pretty tough language. The message is clear that this is now right at the top of the priority list for the leadership here in Beijing. Watching and waiting, but growing increasingly impatient. Uh, John, many thanks again. John Sudworth there with the latest for us uh, on that crisis uh, in Beijing.